video, I'm going to share 30 projects I created using the Sending Hearts Paper Pumpkin Kit, January 2021, or yeah, 2021. And I also used uh, the Sending Hearts add-on kit. So just so you know what's coming up, and I, I didn't even finish it all. I mean, actually, I have several of them, but I didn't, I didn't even finish all these. So what's coming up is this. This kit contains enough materials to make eight cards. So Paper Pumpkin, if you're not familiar with it, it's a subscription-based service. And you get it if you're in the United States or Canada, but in my case, you can only subscribe to me. I'm a U.S. demonstrator, so you, if you want to subscribe and you're in the U.S., then that's great. Hi, Caroline. And it's something that I get, I get each month. I get two kits each month. I love doing it because it gives me my crafty mojo. I get new supplies. I get like an infusion of new ideas just flowing. You never know what you're going to get until you get it in the mail. It's a surprise. And then I always like to just see what else I can do with this kit. So each month I bring to you usually several videos. Like in this case, I've already shown a video on how to use this stamp set with your scan and cut. Last month I did a few videos. Hi, Jean. So there's, there's a lot I do with these kits each month. Hi, Julie. And I just like to extend it beyond what it, beyond what you, you can just do with the kit. So let's just start with what you can do with the kit. Then I'm going to show you some other cards. I have 12 cards to show you. I made 12 cards. Of course, I had to use extra supplies. Um, but I used one kit. I used one full kit and some of the, and most of the embellishments. And then I used some extra Stampin' Up! supplies, which coordinate. I'm going to go over the coordinating colors. Then I used what's called the add-on kit. So I made nine boxes with this. So all together I have 12 cards to show you. 12 different cards. And since I have 30 projects, the rest would be, what's 12 and 18. 18 3D projects. Okay? So if I missed anybody coming in, hi Kathy. Sorry about that. I can't, I can't always look up and see. Uh, oh yeah, hi Bashair came in at the beginning. All right. So when you open up the kit, you're going to look at, the first thing I like to do is look at the coordinating colors. They are basic black, gold foil, petal pink, poppy prayed, smoky slate, and white. Then I look at the, I don't really open up the instructions. I'm just not an instruction kind of person, but we do have step-by-step -step instructions if that's what you like. I am more of like a glance at the front picture and then just sort of take off from there. So my first couple cards I made weren't even you know, following these instructions, but I'm going to start with, to, to show you, I'm going to start with a couple just so you can see what you can make with the kit. So if you want to do nothing else and just subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you can make fantastic cards and projects just with the kit alone without doing anything else. So here's my first example of that. I stamped this in Poppy Prayed. I'm going to give you some stamping tips in a little bit. And also what I like to do at the end of my videos, or actually somewhere, maybe in the middle of my video, is I will unbox a full paper pumpkin kit so you get to see what type of supplies, how much comes in a kit. Of course, you can't get this kit anymore because in order to get this kit, you had to subscribe by January 10th. So this kit, if you subscribe now before February 10th, you're going to get the February kit. Okay, so and that has to do with, there's some, uh, I believe it has to do with some, like florally pat, some kind of floral pattern. I forget what it's called. I'm, I'm, I'm totally on Valentine's Day right now. All right, so this is this this embellishment came in the kit. I stamped it in Poppy Prayed. This little embellishment came. This is Petal Pink card. I really like how the cards were double-sided, so I could take them apart and use them to make boxes out of them and things. I like the gold foiling. Um, you can add extra little stickers with that. Okay, so that's the first one. Next card is, again, straight out of the kit. The only difference was you take your stickers, and I'm always full of tips and tricks, so... Just if you're one of my subscribers, you'll get extra tips and tricks. What I did for this is you can take, since this is Poppy Prayed, and this is just straight out of the kit, the ribbon and everything, this in border, this little embellishment is something that's retired, but that's from a iridescent pearls. I like to, I like to add some pearls and things, right? Well, if you take your Poppy Prayed alcohol marker, right, and you just color in these hearts like that, let them dry a little bit. And then get your tweezers or your, you know, I'm using tweezers or your take your pick tool or something. And sometimes they smear a little bit when they're really wet. So I sometimes get up a little bit drier of a marker. But that's how I colored those hearts. Okay. 
and I did a couple layers to get them to be like stark poppy poppy prayed like that I really like how they came out and so I used the petal pink heart all the hearts that came but then I colored a bunch of them in poppy prayed so you're gonna get to see me do that throughout okay but other than that it's just straight out of the kit this is a poppy prayed card background right thanks Denise and then you know this is just another card just like that okay now if you missed my last video and you have a scan and cut or if you don't know what a scan and cut is and you want to know what it can do I took let's go back to this these pieces came in the kit these these little these little white pieces right well I scanned in the, the gold heart and I didn't cut it out because I like the way it's all foiled I didn't cut out the heart instead I saved the shape of the heart and I made lots of hearts that I'm going to show you later how I stamped onto those hearts. So I was really able to extend this kit. So if you, if you have a scan and cut or you want to know what a scan and cut can do, definitely check out that video on how you can extend your paper pumpkin kit by using your scan and cut. Hi, Carmen. These little snails are in the, the little snails there. This one and this one are from the Sending Hearts add-on kit. And this, this snail here is actually, it's a stamp that's part of this stamp set. And I actually colored it with the Stampin' Blends. I used Pool Party, Light and Dark Pool Party, and Petal Pink to color, to color that snail. These little resin hearts, these little white resin hearts are from the Snail Mail Suite, which is part of our new catalog at Stampin' Up. And all these little stamps here are all from the Paper Pumpkin Kit. This stamp, so this is one, two, three, and four stamps. I stamped it five times. All these stamps stamped in Poppy Parade all five of those stamps, or was there four? One, two, three, four. All four of these stamps, this one I stamped five times, all four of those stamps are from this month's Paper Pumpkin Kit. Okay? And that's a pool party heart in the background. Yes, definitely, Vicki, check out the last video where I, I, I showed how to, well, you already know how to do it, but I mean, you could check out the video on all different ideas on how to, what you do with it. So like this one here is a, a heart that I duplicated. Then I made a little outline distance for it with the pool party. And it really extended my kit. I colored this one with, with um, Poppy Parade and Blushing Bride. Oh, no, we don't have Blushing Bride blends. I used Petal Pink blends. We don't have Blushing Bride, Bride blends, but I was able to blend a few pinks to make something look like another color for another project. Little resin hearts. I like the little Poppy Parade envelopes. These go right in there. And if you are going to put embellishments in the envelopes like this, you might want to put a piece of white paper when you're mailing it because you don't want these to pop through the envelope or any like this is has a hump on it when you tie a knot like that on a bow it hasn't you know so when you put it in there you might want to put a little piece of paper in there with it all right this is really fun and then I'm going to move on to some 3d projects and I'll get back to the rest of the cards later so this one's really fun I, I, I came up with this idea because I don't know if you recently saw my YouTube tutorial on how to use hot dog I have to see if I have my slimline card handy. So this is the same hot dog. This is the same stamp set, hot dog. Here's another, here's a slimline card made with hot dog. Okay, so this, these little, I colored these with the, the alcohol blends, the crumb cake alcohol blends. And then I just thought, wow, you know, these little hot dogs look like they're in love. They looking right at each other like they're talking here and it made me think about it when I saw, when I made the, a bunch of these hearts I said what else can I do with these hearts and the reason that the little signs on his back <laughs> is actually because um, I actually got some real red I'm not is this real red no this poppy parade I got some ink under there so I was just kind of covering him up but you could put the sign you could put be mine over here you could put be mine anywhere but I just happened to put it right there because like I said I messed it up so that's the hot dog stamp set Super easy to cut out hot dogs with your scan and cut. Super easy to color them with the Stampin' Blends. So if you missed that, check it out. And then I use this tone-on-tone uh, -tone stamping technique where you stamp the little, when I say the little flowers, a lot of these are being washed right now, but that's what I mean by the little flowers. And I'll, I'll be showing you what the stamp set looks like. But that little flower is what I stamp tone-on-tone -tone on this card. All right, let's take a break from cards for a moment now. And I will now show you some 3d projects let me move these away okay so the add-on kit and i'm going to show you what's inside them too the add-on kit is just so easy to to use these little 
I've already started, I've already sort of folded, these are ready to go, okay? I've already put pieces of poppy prayed ribbon on them. That ribbon was on clearance recently, so it matched. But they assemble like this, you get, how many, 20? It just says one kit. I think there's 20 of them. There's a lot of little boxes and a lot of little snails. You get these little snail cutouts and you just fold along the score lines and you go like that and you go like that and you snap the sides. Yes, and you put oops with the ink is an opportunity for embellishment. That's right. You have to put it. I was I was thinking like put a little jacket on them with the little be mine on it. And then that's it. That's how you assemble the boxes. Very easy. And you just decorate them. Now they don't fit much. Right? Hi Cheryl. Oh good, I'm glad you like it. So let's open up, I'm gonna open up each box because instead of waiting till the end, I'm gonna, as I, as I show you the boxes, because I have so much at the end to show you, like I usually show you all what's in my boxes at the end, but I'm gonna, as I show you each treat, you'll see what's in my boxes. This is a piece of real red braided linen trim. And when you use braided linen trim, we have Mossy Meadow right now in our catalog. This one I think was in our holiday catalog. I don't think we have it anymore, but when you have braided linen trim, you just kind of separate it like that. We have other kinds of linen trim. Anyway, inside of this one, there's red M&Ms. And yes, I separate my colors of M&Ms. I actually had Christmas colors, red and green, but even if I didn't have red and green, I would separate them out anyway and use them for different occasions to match. And this goes better with the real red than it does with, the, this is real red, I stamped this in real red, than it does with the or cherry cobbler. Those M&Ms go better with those colors rather than poppy prey. And I want to show you something while I'm here. There's this really cool stamp, I mean not stamp, punch. And I've been using it a lot and it's the dog builder punch and it's where I get this extra heart sometimes to embellish my projects. So that's where I got this little heart. These resin hearts are from the snail mail suite. This heart there is from that punch. Okay, let's keep opening the boxes. And you'll see that every one is different. This one I colored with the alcohol markers. I colored the heart, some, some of this braided trim again behind the snail, and you snailed it. And these little Ghirardelli chocolates, you snailed it is from the Snailed It stamp set, which is part of Snail Mail Sweet by Stampin' Up. And you're gonna see that I put these Ghirardelli chocolates in a lot of the box, in a lot of the things, and I got them out of this box here. I just ripped it open, see? Ripped it open, there's not many left. <laughs> And these each fit in this box perfectly. So a lot of, I mean, every time I do a video, people ask me the same questions and I'm anticipating your questions rather than, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you things that I get asked all the time. So if, if you wonder why she keeps saying that, it's because everyone always says, what do you put in your boxes? What can I fit in my boxes? What size are the boxes? It's a question I get over and over and over again. So I just like to show you different things to put in the boxes. There's nothing in this one. There will be a chocolate. To get the chocolate in there, there's a little tip because it's hard to get this to shut. So I stick it up there first like that and I shut the box like that just so it shuts right. I put the chocolate in first and then drop it down because otherwise it doesn't stay shut when I try to shut, you know, after the chocolate. <laughs> oh, thin treats to put inside of the cards you could use. If you want something to put inside of a card that's thin, you can always use uh, tea bags and stuff tea fits inside cards okay these are the spring the spring uh, miniatures are out so these are like the Easter kind of miniatures you put you could you could fit three in there the problem is when you fit three it doesn't really it doesn't really shut all the way so that's why I just put two but you could sort of put three in there but you just have to if you're gonna put three in there you have to tie it with the little trim and stuff Oh, hi, Vicki and everybody, and Sue. Oh, wow, a lot more, a lot of you guys came in. Honey Bee Stampin' came in while I was looking down. Okay, Be Mine. This is some of those little stickers, some color with Poppy Prayed. This is just a little piece of the card I cut out. More miniatures. I'm going to show you all nine boxes at once, right, because there's that way I'll know that I showed them to you. You'll see that they're each a little different, and then you'll see... Like I, how, how you can like color some. I just want to show you difference. Hi, Carol. Like, hi, Carol from Texas. See how these are just the, from the add-on kit? These ones just are the pop-out embellishment that came with the add-on kit, but these two I colored with alcohol markers. 
So you see there's a little difference in the outline distance. I showed you how to cut these out with the scan and cut the other day. So be sure to check out that video. Here's a nail file that fits in there perfectly. You could actually fit two nail files in there. These little nail files are from the Dollar Tree. And you get about five nail files in a package. They look like this. And they match You know the different projects I'm doing. Some are purple. This one's pink. It's sort of cute. Matches. Well, I don't know if it matches, but the pink I'm using for this and purple I use for something else. Um, there's a, like you get four of the butterflies and one big nail file at the Dollar Tree. One big nail file and four little butterflies. So I use those all the time inside little projects. See what's inside this one. Another one of those Ghirardelli chocolate hearts. I feel like eating one of them right now, like on camera, because I'm kind of hungry now. Every time I open these up, I'm like getting kind of hungry with this candy, looking at the candy. So you saw that this one had, this was the heavy one. That's the M&Ms, the peanut M&Ms. You could put regular M&Ms too. More miniatures. Be mine. Those are right from the embellishment kit. Here's little embellishments straight from the, I'm glad you could shop at your Dollar Tree again, straight from the card kit. Those little strips are little embellishments and the little stickers. More, I put a lot of chocolate in these, as you can tell. I think that's what I put in most of them, miniatures or Ghirardelli's and the nail file. And that one was colored with alcohol markers. Yes, Ghirardelli squares fit in there. Two of them fit on top of each other. Two Ghirardelli squares on top of each other. And that's what I showed the other week, but I don't have any with me right now because I started using the Ghirardelli hearts. And that's that piece of poppy prayed ribbon. All right, so those are those. So I made nine of those, and they're all different. So that's fun. All right, now let's go back to, before I show you some more 3D projects, I want to revisit the cards just to show you some variations of the cards. So here's a couple variations. No, mini Tic Tacs are a little bit too thick, but I have the mini Tic Tacs in here in my tag treats. I put them in these tag treats. I have mini Tic Tacs on thepaperchef.com. If you're wondering where I get the mini Tic Tacs, I do sell those at thepaperchef.com. All right, so back to these cards. Uh, I, made, I made this card with a black piece of cardstock. And then I took the envelope and I cut up the poppy parade envelope, like I cut up the envelope. It's pretty thin anyway. And I just made strips for the background. And that's because I couldn't really find any designer series paper with poppy parade in it that was sort of solid poppy parade. I do have that new paper that's coming in the new starter kits when people join Stampin' Up, but I didn't want to cut that apart yet. So that's where I got this paper from. I stamped that in, I stamped a pool, piece of pool party cardstock and that's Poppy Prey. That's a little piece of the card. I popped one of the snails up on dimensionals and left the other one flat. I just have it white inside and that's a black cardstock base. Okay, then I did a square card. This is just a square whisper white, thick whisper white cardstock. I did a square card because I like the way that the square element just fit nicely in a square card and I cut a card apart, which gave me an extra piece to make a box out of, which I'm gonna show you my box. In fact, I might even show you how to make, I just, we, we can't even make the box project. Everybody asks me about the boxes all the time. So I'll, I'll show you how to make the box I made with the other piece. All right, and then, let me see, snail mail. Before I get into the snail mail ones, I'll do those a like, little bit later. This is one I did with an embossing folder. I used this old world paper 3D embossing folder for a couple of the cards for today's projects. So you really can extend your kit and make things pop. I use a piece of Poppy Parade cardstock, I mean, uh, Pool Party cardstock. I like the gold foiling and this was this little element with the, I love the sending love your way, the stamp from the, from there. It's just a great, it's just a great like font and nice sentiment. So I, I colored this one in with the alcohol blends. I colored a couple of these hearts and I just, that, that piece of old world paper really makes it pop. And that's pool party blank inside. And I got more ink everywhere. I was really getting inky on these projects. All right, so we'll get back to the other cards in a little bit. So now I wanna show you my tag treats. Back to a 3D project. So these tag treats I like to make whenever I have a paper pumpkin kit. Pretty much you're gonna see these every month for me. Some kind of variation of a tag treat. Uh, this this ribbon does not stay on very well just so you know I had to double knot it to get it to stay on to this part I had to double knot it then I had to double knot the bow to get it to not untie 
it's very like nylon-y or whatever, so like you have to double knot it. But it does stay on once you double knot it. Each of these hold too many Tic Tacs. So those are the ones that I have little kits for. Actually, I'm doing spring kits, even though they still have Christmas projects on my website. I'm now using new catalog items. So if you say surprise me, you get Tic Tac kits with little boxes with new, new items in them. New catalog items. All right. Next, I want to show you a technique. We're going to stop and do a little technique. And I want to just get a different, we'll just get another piece of paper, let's see. I'll just use this. I'll use this. Okay, so there's my sponge. So what I want to show you is this. This is this is what's called a Love You Always treat box. Okay, so I'll show you the outside of it. These are so easy to assemble and put together. And they're like giant ones of these. Although these are like a little now these are more like a paper punk box. They're just these are just giant. They hold a lot of stuff in them. So inside of here are Godiva pearls. So what I want to show you is, this is such an easy slider box. I just want to show you how I, how I colored that in petal pink because we have a new product. Oh, that's cool too, Cheryl, to color to cover your, your mini Tic Tacs. All right, the love the love you always treat boxes come like this. So you're gonna take this will be the bottom side because it has a little bit of a seam. So we're just gonna color the top of it. I just want to show you how to color it with the blending brush like I did here. So what you want to do is you want to, like I said, that's the bottom because there's a little seam. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to put that there. And if I only want to color this part, you want to mask off that part. So I just mask it off with sticky notes. I think that's the easiest thing. You know, just to, just to put, just to cover it up on the line. Here's a sticky note I already used. They don't have to be super sticky. You're just covering up so the ink doesn't get on that part. Okay, because I only want the ink to go on that part. And then I'm going to get the other part of the box out. So I'm only coloring the top of the box of the Love You Always Treat box. That's all I'm coloring. Okay, more cards to show you and more 3D items. Let's see. So what I want to do now is get the petal pink and a stamping block. When you're using these blending brushes, you got to be careful not to get too much ink. You could use the blending brushes. I'm just opening up the petal pink ink. And I'm opening it up and leaving it there. You could use the blending brushes straight on the ink like that. But I tend to not use it that way. I tend to take the ink and I go like this. Right? I put some on my stamping block. That way I can control how much ink I'm getting on my blending brushes. And even then, it might come out real dark the first time. So I sort of tap it onto my mat a little bit or onto my sticky note or onto my onto my thing before I start blending. And that's good. Because if, if, if not, if you touch it right to there, I'm just using circular motions. If you touch it right onto here, you'll get this big blob of ink the first time. It doesn't look like I'm doing anything yet. You can't really tell it's getting darker, but you just keep blending it with more layers. Just picking up that ink. There it goes. That's now you can start to see it. And I love these new blending brushes. That's how I use them. I kind of use them the same way I would use a brayer. But I just like these. They're a little bit more. They're a little bit more even. Again, just tap it down onto your mat. Or onto your sticky note. Or onto your silicone. This is a silicone. Like stamping pad. Now, I did try to stamp straight onto these boxes. I will have you know. And it didn't work right. Because the ink... This is great for blending these boxes, but it wasn't good to put this beautiful heart on. So that's why I had to cover this up. I had to put a heart on top of it because I tried to I tried to put this nice heart straight onto this box and it just didn't work. Because the box was it just didn't absorb like the poppy prey, but it absorbs this because I'm blending it. So because my heart didn't stick, so what I did then is I just took one of the hearts from that I showed how to make in my in my scan and cut video. Okay, let's see if I got the right shade. Oh, look, it could be a little darker, but you get the idea. I just want to finish it while I'm here, even though I'm live, because I don't want to have to go back and do this later. This is one of those things where it, it just blends a little better while it's still wet. 
Okay, so I just want to finish the project. So that's that's how you blend it. That's good enough. And very even. So you can make your boxes any color you want. That's how to do that. And let's put that over here. So these are these are our new blending brushes. They come in a pack of three. They're already so popular and on low inventory. Remove your mask. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then you're going to assemble it. That's, that's how to assemble it. I mean, it's pretty much a no-brainer how to assemble it. But that part, this part's a little trickier, so we'll do this part. You're going to take this Love You Always treat boxes. This isn't these... These treat boxes are in our new catalog. The January to June mini catalog. So they'll be around for a while. I absolutely love these boxes because they hold so much. They hold hand sanitizer. And you, as you see, I can put I put Godiva's in them. And so what I like to do is just kind of fold them back like that. I mean, I fold these little flaps back like this. And this little flap I get out of the way. And then you're just going to put that like that and you're going to put that like you're going to snap that, that these sides in you're going to not snap you'll hear a snap in a second you're just going to fold the sides in and then you're going to push this side down so now that that's how it stays and if they're food safe so this is a nice shiny side and these are slider boxes so these are called love you always treat boxes just so you know because it's not on my description of this video yet because I didn't have time to make a description but that is how I made this project here that is how I made it so you have Godiva pearls that fit in there you can fit a lot of stuff in there and I just want to show you what I usually put in there are hand sanitizers like that with some little bath fizzies or some soap that's what I usually put inside these little boxes and candies and things like that but because it is Valentine's Day I give a lot of candy away and so that's what I'm putting in there and you just squeeze and they're really tight and really nice and you can also do nice wraps with designer series paper around them and you can just like you can just decorate the sides and I did a video on how to cut out the pieces precisely with the scan and cut and I did that with the flowering cactus medley so I hope you get to check out that video where you can cover these boxes precisely with designer series paper all right so that's a little tip for you all right well now we're going to do some more 3d items and the 3D items I'd like to show you because we're on the topic of Godiva chocolates. It reminded me I have to show you these Godiva chocolates. <laughs> these are really, really nice. These are called Godiva truffles. Kind of on the pricey side, so I did, I did split up the box that had about uh, 10 in there maybe. It had about 10, so I took them and made different treat toppers. Using the cards, I took the card, the natural score line of the card, and just chopped the card in half. And I think I even had an extra little sliver of the, of the card when I was done. So you can make two toppers from one card. Plus you have an extra sliver. Be Mine is a piece from the other kind of card, the, pe the petal pink card. And the Happy Valentine, you know, these little pieces are just scraps from the other card. And this is Poppy, Poppy Prayed, stamped in Poppy Prayed with some pool party behind it. So those are called, those are just treat toppers. Again, check out the Scan and Cut video on how to make your own hearts and really extend your kit. Okay, now, did I show you this one? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I showed you this card yet. So this card was something where I just used a piece of poppy parade in the background, a piece of black cardstock. Thank you, Cheryl. And this is just how I did the ribbon behind there. I just sort of like curled it around in the back and made it sort of 3D. All right, so now I have, I have a couple more 3D items in a box. So what I wanna do is I'm going to show you these M&Ms only because they take up a lot of room. And then I can move this tray away because I'm going to need room for one of the things I show you. So let's put this here. So these, these are M&Ms. I told you I get, if I get the Christmas ones. So then I separate the red and green. So I'll be using the green for St. Patrick's Day. And then the, the red ones, which match really well with cherry cobbler or real red. They don't match as well with poppy parade, but I did poppy parade anyway. I did a little bit of each just to show you. So this is Poppy Prayed. Just look at the difference between you stamp the Poppy Prayed and you stamp in real red. This one I colored in real red with the real red ribbon, and this is a Poppy Prayed ribbon. So just look at those two different shades of red, way different. This one, Poppy Prayed, doesn't match the M&Ms as much as the real red. It doesn't matter. They're just little details, but I'm just showing you that they're all different, the toppers. 
These are the reason they're different sizes is because you can get three out of one card. So this is one card. You can get two wider treats and then one thinner treat. These are bags that I'll put a link to my description about. Yeah, I'll go. I'm going to list exactly. Cheryl, Cheryl, you're anticipating. I will list where I get my bags and all that stuff. The one inch bag, the two inch bags. Those were two inch bags. Two and a half, two and a quarter. Anyway, I'll list the exact bags I use because I've been using them for years. All right, so I'll do that right after this video while it's uploading. I'll go get links. All right, this one is a piece of pool party. Stamped in Poppy Prayed. And this is this little piece of the card. Okay, so those are little treats. And um, I'm making lots of them, right? Because I have another whole kit that I'm going to open for you. So I, I'm, I'm, out of, I'm out of cards, basically. I'm out of cards, but I will be making the rest of them. So I don't just sit there. I do. The reason I can get so much done is because well, I'll sit there and watch the Netflix or whatever. Fill the bags of M&M's, right? Fill the bags of M&M's, leaving a space for the topper. That's why I'm just showing you this. Then I'll cut up some cards and do the top, then I'll do the toppers. Make the toppers. Then I go do stamping and scan and cut. This is scan and cut. Cutting out the little stamped images, right? Go do all the scan and cut work. Go do all the, pop all these out of the containers. So that's why I get a lot done is because I do everything in stages. All right, so now I want to stop because let's say, not stop, but I want to show you how to make this box because it's, we're about 30 minutes into the video and I have a few more, I have more cards to show you that use snail mail just so you know where we're at because I have 30 projects to show you and I'm up to um, one, two, this is 30, 26. No, wait, this is 27, 28, 29, 30. This is project number 27 already. But I do have a kit to show you. We're gonna unbox a kit because some of you might not have your kit yet. So I wanna show you what comes in a paper pumpkin kit. And I wanna show you how to make this box, okay? This box I can't make until we unbox the kit, but I will show you, you know, in, in a minute when we unbox the kit. So I just need to get some room and tell you what you need to make boxes with. So let's, let's do that. Let's take, you're going to need a little pair of snips so you can follow along if you want. You're going to need some rolling adhesive or some glue. And if you're going to use regular glue, if you're going to use liquid glue, I recommend you need, you need some little paper, you need clips to hold it there so it can dry. So, or, or clothes pins so you can hold, hold the syrup when it dries. You're going to need either a, pa a paper trimmer and it's going to, you can have one that scores. I'm only using a paper trimmer because it just cuts, but it does come with a score blade. But I'd much rather use my Simply Scored to score with. And the Simply Scored tool looks like this. And it's a really like a must have. Okay. It, it, even if you have a score on, even if you can score on this, I think this is just a must have. All right. So. Let's do this. I'm going to unbox the paper pumpkin and then I'll show you the cards in a minute because I can't show you how to make this box until I unbox the paper pumpkin. Because I don't have anything to make the box with. I'm out of paper. I'm out of cardstock. I'm out of everything. Okay, so what comes in a typical paper pumpkin kit? Okay. Again, you can't get the, even if you subscribe today, you can't get this kit. You're going to get next month's kit. You're not getting this month's kit because to get this month's kit, you have to subscribe by the 10th of the month. When you open up your paper pumpkin, you get a free gift inside the first time you subscribe. The free gift is a stamping block for you to use for all future stamping. So you'll be able to use it right away. It's a stamping block that should accommodate this heart here like this. And it should accommodate any, any kind of sentiments. Okay, you always get a stamp set. Some, some months you get two. One, once or twice a year, you get double stamp set. But that's you get you get ribbon or whatever embellishments. It just depends. And you get always get ink. Sometimes one, sometimes two, but usually just one ink and one stamp and some embellishments. This is a little thing about the add-on kit, which is still available now. I just bought some of a couple days ago. This is that add-on kit that you can get with the little snails and the extra little the extra little things that you can stamp onto, the extra little petal pink things. And it is eight dollars. There it is. It's twenty-four boxes. Oh no, it's not, it's twenty boxes. 20 boxes and 24 decorated die cuts and labels. Okay, you can purchase, if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you can purchase refills for your kits. A refill looks like this. It doesn't come with the stamp set again. I mean, it's everything minus the stamp set and ink spot. A refill. This is what this month's Paper Pumpkin kit looks like. 
as I showed you the instructions. And you get some pretty tissue paper you can use again. So we're gonna, I just need one of these cards, so we're opening that up. So you get these beautiful stickers that you can color with alcohol markers. If you don't have any treat bags, go ahead and use this Ziploc bag, put some treats in it and make your own treat topper. Because this Ziploc bag is a nice Ziploc bag and you can make this into a treat bag and make your own treat topper. So these are the enamel hearts. Here are some Stampin' Dimensionals, that double-sided Stampin' Foam Dimensionals. You get eight poppy prayed envelopes. Okay, eight poppy prayed envelopes. Let's put those off to the side. Whoa, they almost fell off the other end of the table. You get four of these, and we're gonna use these. I'm gonna show you a technique at the end of the video with my Stamparatus, and we're gonna stamp those. Okay, and then you get four of these. Gorgeous for happy mail. Hi, Jean, how you doing? And I'm showing how I use this with the Happy Mail Suite. I mean, I'm sorry, the Snail Mail Suite, which I like to call the Happy Mail Suite. People need Happy Mail more than ever because of what's going on in the world. So even if you're like, I don't do Valentine's Day. Yes, you do. Everybody needs love. It doesn't matter. Send Valentine's to your friends, family. You don't have to, you know, it's just fun, right? Send some love. You don't have to write Valentine's on it. You can just say sending love. Here are the cards. I absolutely love these cards because they're double-sided. So I was able to make a lot of extra, I can make extra boxes that way. Like that can be the top of a box. And then I used black cardstock for the bottom of the box because it's because of this. So those are the cards. So you get four of those. Wow, you wrote a lot, Vicki. It's hard to see all that while it's scrolling by, but I'll try to get it. <laughs> Paper pumpkin stamp sets. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. She's talking about how she stores her paper pumpkin. So read what Vicki's writing about how she stores her extra paper pumpkin stamp sets. I have a binder, a three ring binder, and pencil cases with three ring holes on them. That's how I store my stamp sets. These are the petal pink cards. Here are the embellishments. Those little borders you saw me put over everything. The loves, you saw me put those over everything. This is when you write the word be mine or you fits in there. The stamps fit in there. Here's some more borders. You can see them. I like to pop those out. Here's some more, here's some glue dots to help you with the little ribbon bows. And here's some of these, but you, you really want to get the add-on kit because you'll get, you only get six here, but you'll get 24 of these in the add-on kit. And that's how, that's a paper pumpkin kit for you. That's about what it comes with. So what we want to do is take one of these cards and we're going to make a box out of it. Okay, so we're going to first trim. You know what we'll do instead of black card stock for the bottom, I will go ahead and use the petal pink for the bottom because I don't, I don't have any black card stock here with me, like very handy. So to make a box, you're just going to go ahead and chop the card in half. And everyone always asks me the size and it really does not matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because you're just chopping the card like this. You're just chopping the seam of the card off. See, just chop it right before where it's scored. It really doesn't matter. And you're going to see why it doesn't matter what size box you make. I mean, it doesn't matter what size you start out with. What matters is this. You always, to make a box, you need two rectangles, okay? One is going to be the top, one is the bottom. The bottom needs to always be a smidgen smaller than the top. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what size your box is. Don't get hung up on size. Size doesn't matter, okay? You, a smidgen is a sixteenth of an inch. So what I do is I put it on the little trimmer on the black part, and I just go like right over the black part, and that's a sixteenth of an inch. That's a smidgen. The definition of a smidgen is a sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> So you want to take the smidgen off the bottom of your box, off the side and off the top of your box. You can actually look for the 1 16th. It is, we do mark this, this paper trimmer is marked in 1 16th of an inch, but I don't want to get too technical. I mean, not too technical. I don't want to move it around that much more. I'm taking sliver off. Now look, that's how you do, uh, that's how you make a box. That's, that's as simple as that. It doesn't get any easier. You take two rectangles. It doesn't matter if they're gigantic rectangles that are 12 inches, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if they're tiny little rectangles, three inches, as long as one is bigger than the other, the bottom has to be tiny bit smaller than the top and that is all you need to know for making your box. Okay, now you need to know that you're gonna score the same side around the sides of the box the same way. Around the side of the box the same way, okay? So meaning, if you have a score, if you score along your paper trimmer, that's fine. But I'm going to score with the Simply Score because I like to store with my Simply Score. 
I need to move this over. Hopefully my doggy punch doesn't fall off the table. Let's see how much I can move over without having an avalanche. Okay. So we're going to take the top and the bottom of the box. It doesn't matter. The, what, for this one, we're going to use three quarters of an inch. That's what size box I made, so I'm just going to make the same size box again. So to get three quarters of an inch, you don't have to do any math. You just go one quarter, two quarter, three quarters of an inch. Don't try to do any math from the right side and count backwards because you'll mess it all up. Just keep turning the paper. Three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch. And if you're smart and you save your little markers, there's actually little markers that fit in there. And if you use the same, if you use the same spot, you can, you know, you can mark it off. That's what these little holes are for. My, I call them little nibs. And I found someone online that sells me these that she has like a 3D, a 3D plastic printer. So I have to try to remember what that link was, but she mailed them to me. So that's it. That's how you make the box, that the top and the bottom. Now we're going to just attach the box. So I just want to just reiterate the three quarters of an inch in case you're not familiar with this scoreboard. This is simply scored. The number one is actually before the number one inch. That's an inch. The number one inch is the longer line. So this is an eighth, a quarter, a half, right? That's the three quarters, that little line there. So all I did was go three quarters of an inch around the sides. And you're gonna take your little spatula. And we can use, you can use any spatula. Let's see. I just, here's my Cricut spatula. It's very, very dirty. You can use your scan and cut spatula. You're just going to do that. Okay, so if you are familiar with my channel, I've shown how to make boxes before. But they're ki it's kind of hard to find those videos because I do show it as part of other videos. So someday I just need to say how to make a box out of a card. I think I may have done that. How to make a box out of a card. That's what I'm showing you right now. How to make a box out of a card. Okay, here that now we're going to take the... Uh, Let's see. That's the bottom of the box. It doesn't matter. Let's do the top of the box. We'll do the top of the box first. So what I'm doing is I, I like it's the letter H. I just kind of look. You lay the box that way. It's the letter H. And I'm just cutting out little little triangles. It's called mitering the edges. I'm cutting out little triangles off these little flaps. So leave this little piece alone. Leave that alone and cut out your little flaps. I mean, miter the edges like that. See, that's all. Little triangles and little triangles off the edges. And then that's where your glue comes in handy. If you want to use liquid glue, it's more forgiving than the rolling adhesive. So you can use, you have to get in there and get that angle. It doesn't have to be too deep of an angle. But if you don't miter the edges, it sticks out the side and it doesn't really work. Whoa, I cut a big hunk out of that one. All right, so that's the idea. Did I do the triangle yet? Okay, and we do the same thing to the bottom of the box. I'm not decorating the box. I'm just showing you how to make a box out of the card. So take any of your paper pumpkin kits. It doesn't matter what size card you start out with. Take any card you have at home, cut a card in half, make one rectangle a smidgen smaller than the other rectangle and make a box. If you want the box to be deeper, then make it one inches on the side. If you want it to be narrower than, or not as deep, make it half an inch instead of three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch is a good size, I think, for fitting candy in there. It fits more than the, ooh, I accidentally cut through that one, but that's okay. And then if you're going to use liquid glue, I'm going to just go ahead and use the snail. And I am going to get, get it rolling there. I'm using snail, but if you're using liquid glue, I'm going to show you that you would use the closed pins to hold them while you dry. But I don't need to do that because I'm using seal. I don't I don't mean snail, it's called seal, guys. We, we used to we used to have adhesive called snail, but it's actually called seal now. See, it's like rolling adhesive. It's actually called seal stampin seal plus. Now, if you're using liquid glue, that's where I told you about the little trick. Use the clothespin trick if you're using liquid glue. I don't need the clothespin trick because I have rolling adhesive. I'm just showing you the trick. 
That's how you make your box. And then when it dries, you just let it go like that. So that's how you make your box. If you don't miter the edges, then what happens is they stick out. It sticks out on the side. Like if you fold it over, the, the top sticks out. So this piece needs a little heart or something. Because I messed that piece up. But let's see if we can't get the bottom of the other box to fit in there. So now I'll show you what's in this box. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, I put more chocolates in it. Godiva, milk chocolate, and Ghirardelli's. Just some fancy chocolates. Yeah, this, this one fits. We'll just use this, this bottom of this box on this top. See, so without even measuring, I didn't measure either one of these. And look, this fit exactly too. Because why? Because when I took the card and cut it back to this, I chopped off this little seam. You see the little seam of the card? That's when I, now you can now chop it off this seam and you'll have a lid, you'll have two, or you can make another box. So in other words, I didn't even try in this bottom fit without measuring. So I don't want you to get hung up on measuring. I mean, you can measure if you want, right? The two rectangles. All right, so that's that now. Stamparatus trick. Oh no, I have a couple more cards to show you and then the Stamparatus trick. All right, so we have cleared space. That's how to make a box. Now, last cards I used, for these last cards I used the Snail Mail Suite. Oh, how I love the Snail Mail Suite. I'm sorry, I'm so excited, my camera is shaking. I am so excited about the Snail Mail Suite. So in this, with the scan and cut, I cut out extra snails. This snail is from the add-on kit. I cut out extra snails from the designer series paper using my brother's scan and cut. And now, because of this mail thing in the background, this thing, because of this, I'm able to totally take this cool element and put it with the designer series paper and you know colors from the other suite and make it now. So this is now, instead of petal pink, the suite, the snail mail suite uses Blushing Bride. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit different color of a pink and it uses real red, but it matches Poppy Parade well enough. And it, I use Coastal Cabana, so it's blank inside. Okay, so I just think I like, I, I was able to extend this Happy Mail, or Snail Mail, snailed it, snailed it stamp set. I used the Happy Mail stamp and the postage, rectangular postage stamp punch. And I was able to just have so much fun with this one. Okay, the next one is this. This one is, I used one of the little stitched shapes. I think it's from the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And I used a piece of Designer Series paper. And again, that old world paper, 3D embossing folder that I showed you earlier. And this time I took a piece of the Coastal Cabana because it went with the Snail Mail Designer Series paper. And I used this embossing folder and a piece of this Blushing Bride Designer Series paper from the Snail, snail Mail and that little heart. And this time it's in real red. Okay, so here's the difference. Look at the difference in the kinds of red now that you see. So coordinating colors do matter when you can, when you can match them as much, you know, if you can match them, try to match them. This is real red. This is Poppy Parade. Poppy Parade is a lighter red. So because I was using the real red, I colored the back of the snail with the alcohol markers in real red just to match it up. And it just matched better. Okay, and then lastly, this is my favorite of all the cards. Of all the projects, of all 30 projects, I think. This is my favorite of all 30 projects. Why is it my favorite? Because of the cute little envelopes. I can't get enough of these cute little envelopes, okay? Inside of this snail mail suite are these little envelope, stitched envelope dies. They're super, super cute. And it makes little, you can put little messages inside them. And I put little snails inside them. I mean, just playing around, I'd have to color that snail. You cut out the designer series paper. Okay, so that's why this is my favorite card because I put a little stitched envelope right onto the card with one of the snails sticking out of it and a little letter sticking out of it. And that's why it's my favorite. I stamped the love from the stamp set, the high valentine from the stamp set, from the paper pumpkin kit. But then this stamp, the happy mail enclosed, is using the this one. It's using this stamp and I stamped that in real red. Again, just blank inside, but this one goes like that. It folds like that. And it's just another piece of designer series paper. You can see the squirrels. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, I like that it it doesn't just coordinate with this. Because Denise mentioned she likes how Stampin' Up! coordinates with other things. Okay? 
Well, it doesn't, this, this paper pumpkin kit doesn't just coordinate with snail mail suite. It, it does. Here's the designer series paper. This is my favorite suite in this holiday catalog. You, you saw that he used the resin hearts and there's those little tiny envelope dies, snail dies. But it also coordinates with this back here. This is from the, the Valentine's. So it really coordinates with this one. You see? The love and the always. This whole suite. I think it's a mega suite. The love you always mega suite. It coordinates with this month's paper pumpkin kit as well. But I realized that not all of you have this. And it might be hard to get by the time Valentine's Day rolls around. But you can still get it for next year. I got these love you always treat boxes from, from right here. In this love you always suite. All right, last is the Stamparatus trick. So I wanted to wait till I had this thing to show you. I needed some of these because I used all mine up. So here's my here here are these little pieces. So a Stamparatus is a stamp positioning tool, and it's really fun. It's a really fun thing to have, and it should be on my table somewhere. <laughs> I make myself laugh sometimes because. Like in, in one video, you wouldn't believe how things get so buried that it does, it's like you don't even know where it went. Okay, so here we go. Here it is, here it is. So this is, I showed in my scan and cut video how we made lots of these hearts, these white hearts, okay? And we, I, I, I have a little outline of my white heart and I have a Stamparatus. This is the Stamparatus Stamp Positioning Tool. I can ink it up and ink on those hearts. Well, I don't have any more of those, but I do have these because I just opened a new kit. So this is a magnetic base plate here. This is a, in this, it's a magnetic base plate, see? This is a magnet. I covered it with washi tape so I could get it up easy. This is a foam mat. And then these are like these little grid papers, which I keep using and then I turn them over and use the other. I have a whole pack of grid papers, but I still turn them over. These are just extra magnets I had because I keep losing my magnets. I put a little line there for where these go. Okay. And I put a little piece of tape there, a little piece of seal there. Now before I lower this stamp, let me put another little piece of seal there because I don't want it to, I don't want it this to, to slip. Before I lower the stamp, I just want to show you this. That you're going to, I'm going to lower it and that's perfect. And I want to stamp onto that. Why a stamp positioning tool? When you have this many hearts, something is bound to go wrong. Meaning when you just try to ink up a stamp and you're trying to, say you try to use a stamping block and you ink on this. Not that something's gonna go wrong, but we'll use Real Red. It, it means that um, you might not be able to get good coverage the first time around. So I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna open up my ink and tap on there. If I don't get good coverage, it doesn't matter because I'm using a stamp positioning tool. I can just lower it again. I'm just going to press it down, lift that up. See, it's not all fully covered, but that's okay because I can ink it up again and it'll go in the exact same spot the next time. That's what I really like about it. And that magnet's holding the paper down and I do have a little piece of sticky behind it just holding this down. You could also use washi tape to hold your, okay? And if you still don't get good coverage, don't try to go for a third time because you're bound to like not have that much luck on your third time around, instead get your alcohol markers or your regular markers, and you just fill in the little blanks. Oop, that's a, I used the thin side. Fill in any little spots, because I have really good coverage, but there's might be little white dots, just a little bit like that, and it's perfect, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and do those. I'm gonna do all four of those. Actually, I'm gonna actually do them in Poppy Prey next. That was real red. I, I'm gonna go ahead and do it in Poppy Prey because Poppy Prade is going to match better. This is Poppy Prade. It's going to match the projects better. But I just wanted to show you. I, had, I happen to have the real red, you know, sitting right there. So I wanted to show you the Stamparatus trick. All right. So I hope you learned lots of tips and tricks. You learned about how I sponge how I sponge colored this box, how you make this box, how you can decorate these boxes in many different ways from the add-on kit, how you can take your different products from your Stampin' Up! collection and really extend your card making skills to a whole new level by using other coordinating products. I hope you learned about how you can make some treats to make people's day over the Valentine's Day. You can make people happy by giving them some treats. 
This is great for your waiters, mailman, you know, coworkers. Like spread some cheer by giving them some holiday, some Valentine's treats. Do it for every holiday, not just Valentine's Day. You can still get these add-on kits. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope if you're not familiar with Paper Pumpkin that you'll go ahead and click on my link and subscribe and you can always suspend or cancel anytime. Most people don't really cancel ever, they just sort of suspend, meaning when you're not into doing it one month, you can just put it on hold. Suspend means you're gonna put your thing on hold so you don't get billed that month. Anyway, that's Paper Pumpkin for you and I do this every month, so I hope you will check out my other previous Paper Pumpkin videos. Ooh, I did it in under an hour, which was my goal. 55 minutes, almost 56. All right, let me see if there are any questions, comments. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Tracy. Yes, Tracy, you can watch the replay. It takes a few hours for it to upload. When I go live, Tracy, it takes like several hours to get off my phone and actually publish onto YouTube. So right now it's in streaming mode and it's not as high quality. Later on, it'll be better quality when the high quality video uploads from my, from my camera. All right, well, that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Thanks for being here. Have a great weekend.